Sup guys, Bjorn here. I hope you're uh, having fun in Corthia. I figured today would be a little bit more of a min-max uh, video. We're gonna take a look at the Archivist Codex rep guide. Uh, we're gonna see how you can uh, get every ounce of it every single day, you know, if you really wanna farm that rep quickly. I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it. But first, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want more 9.1 content. I'm gonna be releasing class guides, uh, content guides, probably some raid content, some Mythic Plus content, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, then make sure to subscribe. And also leave a comment if you have any questions regarding Corthia or anything else about my channel. So without further ado, let's go get right into it. But before you waste 20 minutes of your life uh, watching this stupid video, maybe you should ask yourself, why are you actually grinding the rep in the first place, right? So what are the rewards for it? Well, there's going to be a Shadowlands Season 2 socket similar to Venari that you can use in your items. Uh, same goes for the conduit upgrades. It's going to be the same uh, random conduit upgrade. Both of those are definitely worth it, but still kind of yikes, in my opinion. Then we have uh, 239 Domination Socket off piece. Might not be that relevant because uh, the raid will be out by, by then, by the time you get uh, rank 6 to buy it, right? And the same pretty much goes for the 233 upgradable gear, right? By the time you'll be able to upgrade it to 233, you need to be rank 6. And by that time, like heroic raid is out, mythic raid is out, so... If you're a raider, probably won't be that useful, but if you're just a casual, just doing some work content, then uh, 233 gear, gonna be pretty nice. And then we have 230 craftable at rank 4, which is already out right now in the auction house. If you want to see those items, just uh, go look in the age. And last but not least, there's also a mount on the vendor, so if you're a hardcore mount farmer, or that's why the reason you min max it, sure, but probably not recommending that. So if you're not interested in any of those things, then definitely don't min-max this rep. Just play Corthia as you enjoy it. Just do like a, a little couple of things every day. It's not going to be that big of a difference. But if you do actually want to min-max it, we're going to explore just how right now. So before we even farm any rep, there's some useful items you should definitely consider getting. We have this thing here, the trained gourmet, uh, gourmet carrier. And it just... Some is a little pet that helps you sniff out treasures. It's pretty useful. It only costs 50 catalog research, so it's not uh, it's not a big deal to get. And it, he's sold from the cat from the archivist codex uh, rep vendor himself, right? At tier one. Then we have the vault anima tracker from the this advanced rep, and that's only gonna cost one k stigia, so you don't even need to spend any new currencies on it. It's not the biggest deal, but it just makes it so that you can see these stolen anima vessels when you're in the old maw. And those guys have a small chance to drop, or they, they do drop uh, relic fragments, and they also have a small chance to drop like a huge amount of relic fragments, right? So, if you really want to min-max, you should pick this thing up, and you can see those while you're questing like over here in the old maw when you're doing the assaults, the weekly assaults, the Tormentor of Torgas, maybe you're in the rift over here somewhere, you can um, you can pick up those vessels and they will give you some extra relic research. There's a couple of extra things I want to touch on as well. For example, picking this old item up from 9.1, Cypher of Relocation from Venari can be a good idea if you want to min-max in the rift, we'll talk more about that later. And also, on a similar note, you should put your Hearthstone in Corthia and consider getting the wormhole generator if you're engineering especially and even if you're not engineering you can just pick up Shadowlands Engineering 1 buy it on the auction house and you have it instantly and that will allow you to teleport anywhere you want uh, kind of like a, a second hearthstone right in uh, and that is usable in the rift so can be pretty good if you want to travel around quickly in the rift and then the last thing is a buff you get from the archivist codex rep vendor again it becomes uh, available at tier 2 and it lets you see mobs around Corthia who are carrying uh, relic fragments so they become much easier to farm. So I would suggest getting that as well. Okay so going into the stuff you're actually gonna do every day in Corthia I figured we'd split it up into three parts because there's quite a lot to get through. We'll start off with the daily stuff you know everything you can do on a daily basis what your priorities are there like which things are you gonna do first if you have uh, limited amounts of time which are the best rewards and then the priority list just goes down, right? And then there's also uh, stuff to do in the rift that we're going to split off into a separate rift section just to make it easier to um, to digest. And then 
there's the one-time rep quests as well with the faction, right? With the Archivist Codex have these one-time relic quests that gives a huge chunk of rep, but they can only be completed once. And we're going to touch on those last. So in terms of just the daily stuff, you want to get into Cortia today. What are you going to do? Well, you have three daily quests each day. They're not always going to reward relic fragments, but one of them uh, is going to reward relic fragments sometimes. So I just suggest picking those up and doing them as you move around the zone, right? Then, secondly, the rares are pretty much the thing that's gonna take you like the longest amount of time probably on any given day. If you do wanna kill like as many rares as you can, it's gonna take you the longest. So I just suggest just start working on the rares right away because as you do the rares, you're just gonna run around court here. You're gonna pick up a ton of treasures and all the other stuff you need to do on that given day, right? So. Definitely focus on the rares first, in my opinion. And a great add-on to help you with this is gonna be Tomcat, Tomcat Tours. It just makes it so that you see like all the locations of the rares on the map. And this is the best thing, right? It shows you if you've actually killed that rare today or not. So it's super useful for just keeping track of which rares you actually need to camp at the end of the day if you're really min-maxing. So you can see here, I've pretty much killed uh, most of the stuff that's up except like Selnithop for example, I should go over there and camp him There are some rares here that uh, won't be available yet. For example, the Covenant ones like this one Like the Flesh Wing, you know, like this uh, Stygian Stone Crusher here These are the Covenant ones. I think they become available at Renown 48. So don't worry about those ones uh, And then there's some of the rares here that are just in the rift, right? And those can't really be uh, completed either if you're not uh, either very coordinated with someone in Rift or just like you have Rift key yourself, which can be quite tricky to get this early on. So super useful add-on though, and start working on the rares right away. Then we have the Mawsorn and Devourer portals that can spawn. And these things are very good. You should definitely look out for these. It's probably the best event that can spawn in Corthia right now. Uh, they're on um, they're on Tomcat here as well. And you can see a Moss from Portal may appear after killing any other rares in Corthia. So whenever you kill something, you might have a chance to spawn a Moss from Portal or a Devourer tier. And both of those are basically the same thing. They just uh, have a different rare associated with them. And they're going to spawn a ton of small mobs. When you kill those mobs, you get Relic Fragments. So you really want to tag all those small mobs, get their ASAP, just pump AOE them, get into a spec that can like uncap AOE or just perma AOE like Mistweaver or um, Brewmaster is great for Monk, like Destro would be my best option in Warlock even though it's still pretty bad, right? Something that can AOE them so you tag all of those and then you can kill the rare at the end as well. So those are very good events, keep an eye out for those. Now as you go around Corthia just killing rares, uh, collecting stuff, right? You There's a couple of different kinds of treasures. There's the trash treasures, as I call them, which are kind of just like nests, stupid pile of bones, you know, stuff on the ground that doesn't really seem like treasures. I think those are capped at five per day, and then you still won't get any rewards. Although, something really interesting there, the Corthite crystals are actually not capped. The relic fragments, like the rep you get, are going to be capped after five treasures, I think. Still not 100% sure on that number, but I mean, you're going to... You're gonna notice it, right? Because you won't get any when you pick up your next treasure. But the Corthite crystals are actually not capped, so you could keep farming those trash treasures for Corthite crystals. Same goes for the other chests, of course. Then we have relic chests. I think these are either also capped at five per day, or they share. Um, they actually might share a common uh, like daily lockout with the other trash treasures that I just talked about. Either way, you'll also notice like when you stop getting relics from these chests every day, right? Then we have Ma Mawsorn chests, which are actually not shared with the other treasures, weirdly enough. Uh, at least I found them not to be because I did cap out on the other treasures today, but I still picked up some relic fragments from Mawsorn chests. That's a little weird. Then we have Mushrooms. They are uh, also daily capped once per spawn location, so you can run around and pick up a ton of Mushrooms every day. And then there's a daily spectral chest down here in uh, Secrets Quorum. Spawns uh, once per day, as I said. There's like three different keys you need to collect to unlock it. They can spawn in the general area of the 
chest. There's usually like one key around here down to the south. There's one key around in this area to the north. And then there's one key over here to the west. So three different areas. They're not uh, very hard to find usually, but if you do struggle, there are add-ons like handy notes, for example, will show you the possible spawn locations. Something to look into if you if you want that. And then there's this thing here, Reliquary Sight, uh, that I talked about earlier with the purple mobs that drop relic fragments, right? I'm not sure how many of these you can kill per day. They are also capped. Um, should be somewhere around like 20 mobs or even more maybe. You will just start seeing them more infrequently as you kill them basically every day. I'm not sure ex the exact number, but try to get a, like 10, 15, 20 of them in each day probably, if you really want to min-max. Then there's, as I talked about earlier, those anima vessels in the old maw, um, where you, from the Death's Advance rep, that item. You can see them in the old maw. I haven't quite farmed any of these yet, although I would suggest doing it while you're on, on an assault, and most of them are actually in the rift, so we'll talk about them more in the rift section once we get there as well. So as you can tell, in terms of just normal Corthia stuff, there's not a whole lot to do except to just kill the rares every day and go around looting stuff while you do it, right? There's not a whole lot of min-maxing there. The biggest thing is going to come while we move into the next section, which is the rift, right? The rift is something you can access with a rift key. Uh, rift keys drop from normal mobs, from rares, uh, sometimes, you know, from chests and stuff like that. I collected three of them so far, I think. Uh, you can also buy them at tier 4 from the Archivist Codex rep, but... We aren't there yet, right? Or some people are there, but not all of us. And these are turned out to be very, very important because once you enter the rift uh, in a location here around Corthia, there's going to be four daily rift chests that spawn. Uh, usually like one to the southwest, one to the southeast, one to the northwest, and one to the northeast. They have a couple of different spawn points, but they do show up on the map and stuff, so it's pretty easy to find them if you just walk around in the rift. I would also warn you guys that the rift is a little bit scary. There's a ton of mobs that like root you and just fuck you up and stuff. So if you're, yeah, you should definitely just avoid the mobs if you can. Uh, try to like get around there as quick as possible because you do only have 15 minutes while you're in the rift, right? Then there's also a rift rare over here in Vo the Vault of Secrets, Observer Yorick, and since this guy's here, I would suggest that every time you go into the rift, like every day when you go into the rift, you should start in the Vault of Secrets here. There's a rift portal somewhere uh, in one of these houses here. You should just start there, enter the rift, then kill Yorick, take um, the Mawthorn chest, like, or sorry, not the monster chest, the rift chest. There's sometimes a rift chest down here. If it's not here, then it's going to be in Seeker's Quorum. So, go there, take the chest, kill Yorick. Then, as we talked about earlier with the Hearthstone, right? This is where you Hearthstone back to Keeper's Respite. Then you continue your daily chest uh, round, right? So, something I would do is like Vault of Secrets, get the southwest or southeast one if you if it's there. Then you go to Seeker's Quorum, check that out. Then you go down here, check that out. Then you go up here, check this area out. And once you found all the chests, I just go into the mall here, the old mall. And there's going to be one rare here that you can actually kill in the rift. It's called Guard Orgulus. And he also drops relic fragments. So that's like the last thing you want to do on your rift round before you, in my opinion, like you could s continue searching in the Beast Warns or you could get a Cypher of Relocation and uh, transfer back to Uvenor's Refuge because another thing that's actually important in the m in the Rift is a thing called Soval's Horde. Soval's Horde is gonna spawn in the Old Maw. It can spawn in the Beast Warns, the Perdition's Hold, or like around here, the next to Uvenor's Refuge, in Soval's Cauldron basically. And once you find it, you have to be in the rift to find it. And once you find it, you can drag it back to this little bridge here next to Venar's refuge, uh, just in the spot. And Venar is going to stand there, allow you to open the chest. You get a ton of rewards. You get some, um, actually some like temporary rift keys that you can just use anywhere to just pop into the rift. And those are going to be very important, right? Because you do want to get into the rift every single day in order to get those four chests. Because these four rift chests 
they do actually re reward quite a lot of uh, relic fragments compared to like the other chests in Cordia. If you can find Suval's Horde, drag it back to Venar's Refuge, open it there, or sorry, by this bridge here next to Venar's Refuge. Open it, get those rift stones, and then you can use those rift stones in the subsequent days, right, to like uh, maybe find Soval's Horde again. It is a daily reset, or just kill some rares, or get into the rift in Korthia if you don't have any rift stones. And as I said earlier, the anima vessels are still available in the rift, so while you're looking for Soval's Horde over here, be sure to pick up any anima vessels you, you can find. One last note it is quite tricky to. Um, like get everything done in time since you only have 15 minutes for a whole uh, like ch rift chest run here plus killing the rares plus doing Soval's Horde up in the old ball can be quite tough to get all of those things done uh, it, priority list in, in that case is going to be all the four chests first those things are huge then you might not have enough time to even try Soval's Horde I would suggest you try to get Soul Sword done if you can. It is better than killing Yorick or or Orgulus, right? But if you if you feel like you're not going to be able to get the Soul Sword done and maybe you're like three minutes left, there's just no way. Or maybe even like, even if you have like six, seven minutes left after the chest run, it can be quite rough to get the Soul Sword done. So in that case, just kill Orgulus and Yorick uh, if you can do that instead. Your Yorick has 1 million HP, so it might be very tough to solo him, but if there are other people around, you can definitely like 2 3 mana him maybe. Moving on to the one time rep quests in Corthia, there's gonna be uh, 4 new quests unlocking each tier of the reputation. So in tier 1, there's gonna be 4 just uh, quest items scattered around Corthia that you're gonna have to find. If you really want the specific locations for them, uh, you can check them out on Wowhead. I'll put links in the description, but the thing is, they're not time gated, right? You, you can do them anytime you want, and they're a one time thing, so there's no real stress about getting them done. So I would suggest just picking them up as you go about doing your normal court activities. There's no real reason to like min max that. Then, uh, once you unlock tier 2 of the rep, there's gonna be four new ones in special chests around Corthia. And these chests are locked, and they can only be unlocked with keys that you actually buy from the rep vendor himself. So remember that if you. If you see these chests, you need to go to the rep vendor and buy the four different keys to unlock the four different chests. The tier three ones are going to be uh, here at Cyrax the Unknowable and at Yarks of the Pillager. These are the two teleporter mobs or teleporter rares. There's going to be one teleporter here, one teleporter here, and you can use these teleporter repair kits to repair these teleporters. You go up into a little uh, like portal room where you fight the boss. The boss is going to drop one of the items and then there's going to be one more item like in the portal room be behind or er, beside him. So two items on this guy, two items on this guy. And you don't need to do these solo. Usually someone else in the zone are just going to uh, enable these teleporters so you can go up and kill them with the group. So it's no real big deal. These are really easy to get. The f tier four ones are going to be in the rift. So for those, you're going to have to get a rift uh, key. I would suggest doing them as you do your daily um, chest run in the rift. Now, I'm not quite sure where these are. You can definitely check them out on Vahed as well. I think one was over here at Seeker's Quorum. I think one was like uh, over at the Wimps of Swept Airy. I can't quite remember where the other two were. Maybe one over in the Vault of Secrets here actually, I think. But yeah, I'll put Vahed links if you really want to know the exact spots. And then on tier 5, you actually unlock a new item you can buy that allows you to interact with some new sword relics around Corthia. And there's going to be three new uh, rep uh, chunks from there. So that's all of the tier 1s. As I said, they're not on, on a daily lockout or anything, so you don't really have to stress with them. You can just m do them at your own pace. It doesn't matter if you're going to complete them like right now or in two weeks. It doesn't matter if you complete them at tier 1 or at tier 4. still going to be the same rewards. So do as you please with those. And one last thing is going to get 300 uh, reputation. It's a displaced relic, a rare treasure that spawns just on the edge over here at the Vault of Secrets. You're going to have to do some jumping to get to it. But you do see it on a map if you get close to it. So it's really easy to find as well. And that's going to give 300 relic fragments. Really pog. 
I suggest doing that. Okay, guys, that was the full Archivist Codex rep guide. Uh, just a quick summary for min-maxing. The biggest thing is going to be your Rift chest weekly uh, run, right? You want to get all of those four Rift chests every single day. Then you want to kill as many rares as you can while picking up chests and stuff elsewhere. If you actually manage to kill all the rares, then pick up all the chests you haven't picked up, right? But most likely if you've killed all the rares, you probably picked up all your chests as well by then. Then the next thing is going to be those purple mobs, right? 20 of those purple mobs per day, uh, just about. And you'll also notice them stop spawning less when they when they aren't spawning. And then, if you have more time in the rift, if you have s some spare rift keys, you know, you could go look for anima vessels here. There are some anima vessels outside of the rift as well, or at least one of them. And as I talked about, the Sovel's Cauldron is really high value if you can get it. But if you can't, it's going to waste a ton of your rift time. So be a little careful about that one. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one.